Okay. I am here to talk about slightly interesting uh, thing than what you saw just now. I am sure what you saw so far have been interesting in all other aspects. But I am told that um, your word animation in your presentation is, is liked by many people. So I have avoided that typically to uh, just start about what am I doing here and uh, what are the kind of projects which we will be doing under this. So basically, we do a lot of animation, so to say, but we do it for e-learning. At IIT Bombay, we had started this lab uh, around five, six years back where animation is done only for e-learning. So we don't have this Tom and Jerry and other uh, cartoon character animation here. Uh, we have beakers and test tubes and vernier calipers and all that, which is, uh, jokingly, I call it characterless animation because we don't have any character in that. But uh, so to say, we, we have received very warm welcome from various stratas of uh, different education institutes and uh, teachers especially and students who have liked that animation. And for that, we use something called uh, a 3D tool called Blender. So now that you have heard enough, there's something to do now. So I'll show you something which is a top view and a side view of an object. So what could be the 3D view of this object? So can you just doodle around and just show it up from there itself? It's like 15 second job. It's time starts now. Side view, you need this, right? And top view, okay. So you mean to say this, this finger, okay. Quite nice. Anything else? This is not allowed. Anything else is fine. So don't, don't think of staircases. <laughs> that is the simplest one. I had got results at many other places. But yeah, this was quite interesting. So, um, uh, none of them, I think, uh, I don't know whether you thought of it or not, but very few uh, people thought of even this as an option, uh, which can look, so a, a cut face from the top is also looking as a square, if you look at it from the top. So while making anything, I'm saying any object for that matter, but no need to think of that object could be like this from the side. Yeah, this is a perfect answer actually, but uh, but still, you are still going with only straight lines. Nowhere you have thought of. Uh, so even this is a perfect answer, right? Do you agree? So uh, it depends on how you think in terms of the third dimension. So most of the time we assume things as 2D, and uh, that is why this is lacking. So. 3D animation brings you that um, that reality check immediately. Once you see something in 3D, you realize that it's very much real. Uh, based on the same thing, so there are two pictures. One of them is a photograph. One of them is a 3D animated uh, tool created image, so created actually using Blender. Uh, how many people feel that the right side image is a photograph? No? Okay, how many people feel left side image is a photograph? Lot of you, okay. This is a, a 3D animation output. Even this is Blender and uh, to be specific, this part is 3D, rest is a photograph. This was a part of a competition organized by Blender community. Uh, even this is Blender, this is Blender. Uh, even this is Blender and by the way, this is our in-house Blender. So. Artists from my lab have done this, and uh, <clears throat> but we normally don't do this kind of stuff. We do this these things. So the photograph is of the screw gauge, uh, and the big size image is of a Blender created uh, screw gauge, and you can see the obvious advantages. You can use it any number of times; it doesn't break. Uh, it doesn't have any marks of uh, getting D, uh, so you don't have to calibrate it or it doesn't get out of calibration even after you use it for several years. Even this is Blender, so the right side is Blender, left side is a photograph and you can again see some obvious advantages, no need to clean them, even if you put any chemical in that, so in your labs, yeah, people, I don't know how much experience you had with chemical labs, but if there was some stain of the earlier chemical, then the entire uh, your experience would go for a toss. Nothing of that happens here actually, so you can still go ahead and do your experiments. 
what what do we do here why is blender so much of a big name here because we started very modestly with some like four or five people team here and uh, most of the work was done by some of the students like you who came here to do their final year project they were studying in some other colleges and they came here for a final year project and most of those projects have led into various outputs what i am just showing so we have over 200 such models related to e-learning domains. So there is a physics section where you have all the physics models and chemistry models, you have biology models, you have other models. You have um, animation of more than 20 concepts. A couple of animations have actually been so popular, we ourselves didn't believe that uh, animation of the same thermodynamics, uh, the animation was created for a, a distillation cycle actually, not in thermodynamics. Distillation cycle animation has got to more than 2 lakh hits, so we are not really sure whether we are looking at this uh, correct figure or we are not able to calculate the zeros properly. But that was it and uh, people are asking how did you do that and can you share and obviously this is all shared in open source Creative Commons license. We have a repository called Oscar, somebody mentioned before me, I saw that slide. So Oscar.iitb is a resource where you can go there and download all these models and animations and interactive whatever animations are available there. We have published more than seven, eight papers already about how to do animations in Blender, how to create interactivity in Blender and so on and so forth. Uh, 20 odd workshops have been already conducted for students in comm science, IT, teachers in comm science, IT and uh, various places. For even professionals, we have conducted a couple of workshops to teach them Blender and now this is a big need because uh, the software is becoming costlier. So all these Maya and 3D Max users come to me saying, Samir, please get a workshop for us because we are expecting a raid any time now. So better switch to Blender as early as possible. By the way, I come from the industry of uh, filmmaking. I'm a filmmaker myself. So I had those connections. So these guys keep on coming at various points whenever they get that hint. Uh, so, in a nutshell, we have reached out to more than 1,000 people so far. We have a, a page on Spoken Tutorials, Professor Kandan spoke about it just now. If you go there, you'll find a Blender tutorial. So this actually message is uh, specially for these people. So those who have selected <laughs> Blender animation as their projects here, these guys should definitely go and look out for the Spoken Tutorials uh, web page and look for Blender tutorials. There are 10 of them of uh, less than 10 minutes each. So you will have to go through those tutorials. And once you are done, you can just mail us and uh, we'll take you through the rest of the thing. But in any case, for people who are not included in this list right now and wish to learn Blender, there is an option. You can just learn the basics of Blender at least using those, works, uh, those tutorials and pass it on. Again, it's an open resource. So what are we going to do with, with these eight people? Okay, so there are two projects basically. The first one which I am showing here is actually a part of what they have been doing already. So uh, since we don't have time right now, probably I'll just see if I can show you that video. Okay, so what we have here is a tablet version of an animation to teach students the internal structure of eye, human eye. So advantages obviously are that you can touch the eye and you can uh, you can split it open and if you remember in when we were uh, young and students and the teachers used to get a porcelain model of uh, an eye, I don't know what happened to you guys when you were a student but when I was a student, uh, there used to be a porcelain model of an eye and they, she used to open parts of it like this is retina and this is lens and all that. I had no chance in my lifetime to touch that porcelain model for whatever reasons, <laughs> but it was so very exciting to me to see that because the, basically it was so big as compared to your human eye, it was very big model. So it was very easy to understand what was happening. But given a chance, actually I would have loved to do that myself, but I never had a chance. So I just took that inspiration and said, okay, let me do it in 3D now that I have Blender with me. So we have a Blender model like this where you can just take it apart. And you can understand uh, parts of which by clicking on it and you'll get the definition working on it. Uh, all that will come on the tablet. What it does not have is the typical features of gesture control which is normally available on any other tablet app. That you can swipe, you can pinch, zoom, you can twist and all that. That is not possible because we are using Blender and its um, components 
uh, namely Blender game engine to construct these things. How we have got it uh, in a separate way is by using something called libgdx. So this library is actually are helping us to, to give that option but not within Blender. So the task, first project for what we were thinking of is to get this uh, gestures into Blender game engine. Blender game engine like uh, other open source tools is a completely free and open source tool. So we can easily try to do something. I say it very easily that we'll try to do it, but I'm not sure how difficult it is. These guys have tried it and they couldn't find a solution for that. So we settled down for a mediocre option in between, which we will show you sometime later, but that should be, this should be enough for other people. So that is one. The second option is slightly different and this does not, uh, is not dependent directly on Android, but we, we are trying to see how we can make use of that. We have already developed a game which, uh, which students can play uh, using gestures. So <clears throat> that game is called Math Amazing. Again, uh, this is the work done by BTEC students last year. So Math Amazing actually takes you, uh, it's about a practice game to teach maths. So you see a maze here and there are three answers given to a question. And the user has to stand in front of the computer and uh, uh, gesture recognition hardware, Kinect, is used here to uh, get the skeleton of the person, like this. So once you know which is the answer and the clock is ticking already, it starts down from 40 seconds or something. If you know the 8 is the correct answer, you have to make body gestures in order to move this Android guy up to the correct answer. And if you get there, you obviously go to the next level and so on and so forth. So this is already developed. You can see it working. We have Kinect here and we have all the source code for that. The problem is that we, we need to do a couple of amendments here. We need to do the, uh, uh, so if you move out your right hand, the, the character will turn to your right and all that thing is already done. What is not done is based on the complexity level, the maze should change and give some new things, that is one option. The second is that we should have more gestures also incorporated in that, so how, how that can be more friendly because this bending down and we are just looking at whether can more gestures be incorporated. And third is that we use something called FAST which is a character or the skeleton tracking tool uh, available, it's a free and open source tool. So that is the third problem we have. So we just wanted to see if this can be made more interactive. Also we need to see how this logic can be applied to some other game. Maybe not for mathematics but can we make some English game out of it, can we make some history game out of it and so on and so forth. So this is project B. These are two, uh, two projects right now we have. So all the best, thanks. Thank you.